I'm Richard uh, Rawls. Now, today we'll be discussing about ideal solutions and non-ideal solutions. So, ideal solutions are those solutions, in a way you can say that it, it obeys rounds, okay? And its particular definition from the book is, this is the a solution formed whenever we have two liquids, say A and B is mixed, and the solution is formed. Now, in that particular solution, the interaction between A and B, the solid, the solid and the sol solid and the solvent interaction should be of the same category as that of between solid solid or solvent solvent. So please listen to it carefully. A solution formed by mixing two liquids A and B will be an ideal solution if this has identical molecular size, structure and the attractive forces among the solid, so, solid and solvent molecule are of the same order as that of the solid solid and solvent solvent interaction. So in a simple language, suppose you have say solid and solvent. So when these two are not mixed, that means solid is separate and solvent is separate. Whenever we have one solid, that means it will be having certain size and there will be some interaction among them. Yes or no? Between the molecules of solid solvent itself. Similarly, here also, they will be having certain size and they will also have what? Interaction among them. Yes or no? So, ideal solutions are formed only when so such A and B are mixed with their size are of similar range and the interaction between interaction between so whenever these two are based and what happen they will be having its own set and here suppose they have it is not combined it's mixed now the interaction among themselves among the solid and the solvent in a solution has to be of the same order as that of solid solid or solvent solvent interaction that means, in all respects, their properties has to be almost of the same time. Okay? So, this is the definition of ideal solution. Now, there are certain characteristics of ideal solution and this is very important. Okay? Characteristics of... Characteristics of ideal solvents. Number one is what? It's delta H mixing is zero. What does it mean? It means that when these two A and B solid and solvents are mixed, now there is no heat gain or heat loss. That means delta H change in enthalpy is zero. Similarly, it's X delta V mixing is also zero. So whenever you are mixing two volumes of this liquids and if it has to form either solution, then there should be there should be no change in volume. That means the volume of the solution solution has to be equal, has to be equal to the volume of this say A and B, whenever it is mixed. And the third point that we have is an ideal solution always obey Rawls law. It obeys Rawls, Rawls law at all temperature and at, at all temperature and Okay, so you have to remember these two characteristics. Now then, for ideal solution, you have a graph that you have to remember. Now here you have to look at the board carefully. Okay, now for ideal solution, suppose 
you have this graph. Now, suppose at this point, now you are mixing say A and B, two different solvent and solvent to become a, to make it a solution. Suppose at this point, you have only A, that is pure A is present at this point, and at this point, pure B is present. Okay, so if only A is present over here, that means the total mole fraction of A will be equal to 1 and the mole fraction of B at this point will be 0. Okay, why only A is present? That means B is, B is not present. What does it mean? It means that it doesn't have any contribution. That's not. Then at this point, since you have only pure B, that means the mole fraction of B will be equal to 1 and the mole fraction of A will be equal to 0 at this point because only B is present at this point. Now as you go, as you move to as you move towards this side, then what will happen? See, the mole fraction of A will start decreasing from A and the mole fraction of B will keep on will start increasing, it becomes somewhere half over here, then slowly slowly it increases and increases and it becomes maximum at this point. That means at B only, B is present, A is nearly. And uh, here, on the y-axis you have vapor pressure, so this side you have what? Vapor pressure, and this side also you have what? Vapor pressure. Now, as we saw, what did we see? We saw that the vapor pressure exerted by one particular component will be will be dependent upon the mole fraction. Yes or no? Will be dependent upon the mole fraction. Now, suppose the vapor pressure exerted by P will be equal to the mole fraction of it, the partial pressure of A at its Whenever it is at pure state, this is the vapor pressure exerted by A. So this is from Robertson. So since at this point, now please look at this graph, okay? How it is drawn. At this point, only B is present, therefore the contribution of A is zero. Now as you go this side, the more fractions of A will be more increasing, therefore the pressure exerted by A will also increase. Therefore you will be having such graph. Whenever no A is present, its vapor pressure here is what? Zero. This is zero as you go up, vapor pressure increases. So as we are moving this side, the mole fraction of A will be more increasing. As a result, the vapor pressure exerted by the will be increasing, increasing, and it will be maximum at this point when only A is present. And this is known as B not A. Similarly for B, the vapor pressure exerted by this B is minimum at this point because the mole fraction of B is zero. Now, as you move this side, the vapor pressure will keep on increasing and will be maximum at this point when only B is present. Mole fraction of only B is present, that means this is P not B. Now, this is the partial pressure of this line, is the partial pressure for what? A. And this line is the partial pressure for what? B. This is P. Now, the total vapor pressure of the solution will be equal to the partial pressure of total pressure will be equal to the partial pressure of A and partial pressure of B. So this is how you draw the this diagrams for ideal solution. Hope this is clear. Now, let's discuss about non-ideal solution. So, this is the total vapor pressure. Please don't forget. It may look complex, but this is very simple. Now, let's discuss about non-ideal solutions.
how do you discuss it about non ideal forms so here non ideal form is just the opposite of ideal forms that means it doesn't obey rules and here the interaction between the solid and the solvent molecule are of different order than the solid solid or the solvent solvent interaction so let me read it out a solution obtained from mixing two liquids will be non ideal if the solid solvent interaction are weaker or stronger than the solid solid and solvent solvent interaction so in case of ideal solution the interaction between solid and solvent has to be of same order in case of ideal in case of non ideal it has to be either weaker or stronger okay you have to remember this point now let's discuss about types of non ideal solution definition you can look from your book as the types of non ideal solution types of non ideal solution Now the first one, there are three types. Type one, which shows no positive deviations from Rolle's law. Okay, the first one is what? The first one is those which show no positive deviation from ideal behavior. Those which show small positive. deviation from ideal behavior ideal behavior or rolle's law okay example example or example we have you have example benzene toluene solution benzene toluene solution and there are more examples you can refer from the book try to those which so which so lacks positive deviation from positive deviation from ideal behavior example examples acetone and ethyl Alcohol, acetone, and ethyl alcohol, and the third type is the one which shows large deviation, negative deviation. Okay, those which show large negative. deviation from ideal behavior example we have hcl and water solution you have what hcl and water solution so these are three types now this is the we just now we saw about the graph of four ideal solution now we'll be seeing the graph for large positive deviation and That's negative deviation. What what kind of graph is shown by these two types of non-ideal solution? Type two is remember large positive deviation. Type three large negative deviations. So let's try to draw the graph for these two types. And these graphs are very important. Now we are not going to be discussing about non-ideal solution. That means now this is called type two, okay? Positive deviation. That's positive deviation. Positive and which one is positive? That's positive. So such graphs can be drawn. Now you know how to draw these uh, graphs. Now here, say pure A is present, pure B is present. This is equal to this pure B, and more fraction of only B will be present, and more fraction of A will be zero. Here, more fraction of A will be equal to one, and more fraction of B will be equal to 
zero. This time we have vapor pressure as we go up, vapor pressure increases, and this side also we have vapor pressure as we go up, vapor pressure increases. Now, at this point, since the mole fraction of A is zero, therefore this vapor pressure will also be zero. Now, as you go this side, the vapor pressure of A will keep on increasing. And uh, similarly for B, it keeps on increasing this side, and the total vapor pressure will be this. This is the case when it is ideal solution. This or not? This is the case for ideal solution. Now we are discussing about non-ideal solution. Okay? Non-ideal solution. And for that, how do you get it? So this is the ideal case. This is for the ideal case. Just a little. So this is the graph when it is ideal. Now the total vapor pressure will be equal to the total vapor pressure will be equal to the vapor pressure of A and B. Now this is for ideal case. Now we are discussing about type 2 where they show large positive deviation. So if it is large positive deviation, then what happens is the parcel pressure of A itself will be showing positive deviation from its ideal behavior. Can you see that? It is this graph, actual graph for non ideal is above the above than the ideal source. Similarly, for B as well, this will be little more than that of the ideal cases, and the total vapor pressure will be will be more than the total vapor pressure of this total PA and PB. Now this is the parcel pressure of PA, this is the parcel pressure of A, and this is the parcel pressure of B. And this is the total pressure which is for the parcel pressure of A plus parcel pressure of B. Okay? So this is the type 2 positive deviation. See, you can see, see that it is showing the graph is above the this idle above the case whenever it would have been idle. So similarly, this is just for time three. In the time three, time three, you have negative deviation from Rawls law. So here again, if this pure A and only more fraction of A is present. More fraction of B will be equal to 0. If it is B, then only more fraction of B is present. More fraction of A will be equal to 0. And here, don't forget, this is the pressure exerted by B. Whether it is pure, and this is the point where this is the pressure exerted by A, and here it is the pure state. Here, this side, you have a pressure. On the y-axis, here as well we have a pressure on the y-axis. Having an ideal solution, we would have we would have all these dotted lines as our graph, and this would be our p naught b, and this point would be our p naught a. Now since we are discussing about non ideal solution and it is showing negative deviation. That means the actual graph that we get should be lying lower than the expected one. Therefore, the parcel pressure curve for A will be lying lower than that than expected. Similarly, for B, the expected curve will be lying lower than expected. So, this is the parcel pressure curve for PB. And this is the parcel pressure curve for P A. Now your ideal case would have been this, but since both the cases is lying lower than the expected one, therefore the total vapor pressure curve will be lying lower than the expected one. This P will be equal to P A plus P B. Is the total vapor pressure curve that we obtain. So therefore it's very easy to see. Once you know the graph for ideal case, then for positive it has to be more than that. 
In each cases, you can see that for for A, for B, and for as well for the total vapor pressure curve. And if it is sign three, where it is negative, then the curve, the slope of the curve should be lying lower than than that as expected in higher cases. So with this, we come to the end of today's discussion. Please practice this diagrams and uh, remember these diagrams and uh, ideal solutions, its characteristics, these graphs. Okay? We'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, take care. Thank you.